receiving financial chariots. Now, the story of Solomon caught my eye because the story of Solomon says something powerful here. And look what it said in uh, 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 29. It said, and a chariot came up and went out of Egypt. A chariot came up and went out of Egypt. It's powerful. It's saying that there was a chariot that Solomon is possessing. Now, look what it said. And a chariot came up and went out of Egypt. Where is Egypt? The place of bondage where the Lord did the wealth transfers for the children of Israel through Moses. Ain't it powerful? This the same place where there was a money transaction from the satanic kingdom to the people of God for them to worship the Lord. This is powerful. This in the word of God. The chariot went up. Solomon got it. Solomon moving in a financial chariot. And it's right there in the text. But saints, I, I didn't catch it until King Jesus told me. He said, son, look, look. He said, son. You teaching on why I told you to teach on the financial chariot. But he said, let's take the people deeper. It's right there in the Bible. He said, me and you know about that financial chariot, but let's show the people right there. Where is that in the word? It said, and a chariot came up and went out of Egypt for 600 shekels of silver. You remember Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 shekels? <laughs> Judas should have read Kings. And should have told the people, hey, niggas, y'all want me to betray Jesus. Solomon got 600 shekels. You going to have me betray Jesus for 30 shekels? But Solomon in, in 1 Kings chapter 10, he got 600 shekels. Here's the point. Betraying Jesus is not worth it. Now... <laughs> Look at verse 29, chapter 10. And a chariot came up and went out of Egypt. Now, saints, I want you to see this. If you're going to get out of your financial Egypt, you, you, if you're going to get out of Egypt financially, you need a financial chariot. And listen to me, watch this here. When you saw in your financial chariot will lift you up out of Egypt. See, you, you, you know how, um, man, I, I, yeah, I got to go there. I got to go there. I, I'm not going to be on here long because I, but I'm going to show you this in the word of God because it's so powerful. Look what it say right here. Psalm 104. Let's go to verse 3. It says, Jesus lays the beams of his chambers in the waters. Now, I can preach five hours on that. The beams of his chambers. The chambers is in the waters. The waters is the word, the anointing, the streams of God's power. What he put chambers in his word. So you hide yourself in those chambers and you come out a different person. Steve Urkel, Stefan. Martin, Shanene. Tyler Perry, Medea. Robert Williams, Robert Williams. <laughs> Miss Doubtfire. Eddie Murphy, 
Professor Club, Buddy Love. Who maketh the clouds his chariot. You caught that? Jesus makes the clouds his chariot. Why does he make the clouds his chariot? Because the cloud is what he wraps himself in for the glory to manifest on the earth. He uses that for the manifestation of his presence. So he willfully picks the clouds to be his chariot. So watch this. When glory is on you, sowing glory, reaping glory, money glory, the chariot is going to bring you out with wealth and riches. Because you under, you wrapped in that cloud, that cloud, that glory is a chariot. We see right here that the Lord make the cloud his chariot and the cloud represent the glory of God. The, when the glory of God come, you moving in the financial, you moving in the financial chariot. When you saw in and you work in the seed, you Produce the cloud. And when you produce the cloud. You're in the chariot financially. And, and watch what it say right here. The chariot came and went out of Egypt. It shows you what the. And then watch what it said. For 600 shekels of silver. And a, and a horse. For 150 shekels of silver. And so for all the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Syria, did they bring them out by their means. Now look at this. These are financial chariots. And the Lord calls you to ride in them when honor takes you over. And these financial chariots will make sure that you be brought out of Egypt where you won't be in bondage any longer to anything in this life. Not even mentally, not even physically, your health, in no way, shape, or form to be continued. Sowing has a financial chariot assigned to it. Glory to God. Glory to God. And it lifts you out of the place of bondage. So not only you get out of financial bondage, you get out of the bondage of bad addictions, bad thoughts, bad emotions, bad attitudes, bad ways, bad expectations, bad people, bad company. Sowing will take you out of finances that are bad and give you the bag. It'll take you out of finances that's bad and give you the bag. Now, let me just say this, last but not least. You notice that Solomon is moving in money cometh and wealth and riches and increase in 1 Kings chapter 10. Because Solomon's king was in John 10. Solomon taps into abundance in 1 Kings 10 because Solomon's king of abundance was in John 10. And if you pick the 10 and the 10 together, you get prosperity because 
Second Chronicles 20, 20, you believe the prophet, so shall you prosper. So prosperity, abundance is moving in Solomon's life in a very spectacular way because he moving in this grace. He moving in this glory. He received his financial chariot. When you praying in tongues, you put yourself in position to receive your financial chariot. When you praising God and you're thanking him for what you have and you're thanking him for what he has done and you're thanking him for what he's going to do, you're receiving your financial chariot. When you're walking in the seed, when you're sowing your way out and you're sowing like you're crazy and you're sowing like you done lost your mind, you're receiving your financial chariot. And when you start decreeing financial manifestation, you start commanding wealth and you start speaking your wealth covenant on the earth, you're receiving your financial chariot and you're riding 